to Widow Too Soon. This is Michelle Bader Ebersol. I'm sitting here with my friend and co-host Mark Massaro. How's it going, Mark? It's going fantastic. How are you? Good, but I ask you. So <laughs> I said fantastic. <laughs> okay, but let's expand. Use your words. Did you ever okay. ask your kids when they were little? Use your words. When they were little? Like okay, littler. Like <laughs> little, little. Yes, I still use that. Okay. All the time, yes. You know when they were first learning to talk, and it was like, uh, and you're like, use your words. Yes. So what I'm saying is use your <clears> words <throat> and expand. Okay. What's been going on with you? <laughs> Hold on. I want to, I'm doing really well. Good. That's a little I'm inside really joke for Tina that. there. Okay. <laughs> we always correct each other to not say good, to say I'm doing oh. well. Oops. And it's this whole, well, it's just this whole, like, inside joke thing that, um, like, when you go to the grocery store, and if someone asks you or you ask them how they're doing and they say they're good and then you say you're doing well, that it's kind of like <laughs> it's like this joke we have that um, that people automatically think that you think you're better than them. If you say I'm doing well, really? yeah, because <laughs> it's like it's like the proper way to say it. Oh, you know, I'm it's like proper that. grammar or whatever I'm all, or whatever. So anyways, <laughs> I'm doing really well. And Perfect. let's see. Okay, so people are going to think I'm lying based off of the past couple episodes, but <laughs> I was showing a house the other day out in the boonies, uh -huh. and I saw this huge owl. Really? Like, yeah, really. Like, just <laughs> – he was. I was coming around this bend, and all of a sudden I see this massive wingspan. Like, owls – some owls oh. are huge. And he flew up in the tree, and then, like, a few minutes later, I saw a falcon carrying – or a, a hawk or something like that carrying a bunny which was sad but nature right Aww. so um and i'm like where am i like <laughs> you know and then i saw like a turkey vulture so yeah anyways um and i did not get out of the car and fight any of them okay just good. to be clear so do you like showing houses like do you dress up and like here's this i do yeah i it like? so <clears throat> i do you know obviously i dress professional and no. um you know, I go into the house and just I have my MLS listing with me. And as we walk in, I say, OK, well, you know, this house is, you know, 1900 square feet. It's on the market for 340, that whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, and then just kind of let them look around and we talk about different things when we go into different rooms. And fortunately, right. I have a lot of knowledge of like, you know, construction and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it helps. Um, that there's a lot of an a lot of questions that I can answer. So um, that's awesome. But yeah, yeah, things things have been going well. That it's been just a lot of a lot of work stuff. And uh, gosh, I feel like there's been so much more. But I'm kind of drawing a blank on anything exciting or interesting that's happened. So uh, how about you? What's up with you? Well, nothing like hugely exciting. But this is an interesting story. So. As you guys know, we have a golden doodle named Bentley. He's three years old, and we have the hardest time, like, keeping his hair cut the right length. We let it grow too long, and then they have to shave him, and it's so sad. So it was really long, and, like, he had, like, burrs in it, like these little things all stuck in his hair, and it was just gross. And Joel's like, we need to get this done before my parents come, which his pa parents are coming tonight. We need to make this dog look a little better. And so yesterday, so I made the appointment. And Joel took him, and they call him, and they say, come back. We can't do this. He has too many burrs. So he gets there, and he's half shaved. <laughs> like, literally, his head was not shaved. It looked like a lion. And then his body was shaved, and then half of his legs. He looked crazy. <laughs> and I was like, are you? So he calls me. He's like, so I'm out in the parking lot. I'm getting his burrs out and then I'm going to bring him out. Oh, so they told him you need to go take him to a vet to do a vet shave and like all this crazy stuff. But he's sitting in the parking lot taking out the burrs with pliers. Like he's in, he's, he FaceTime me and he's like trying to take him out. He brings them back in and they go, how'd you do that? He's like, my pliers. Like, so then they wouldn't finish him. Like they didn't have time and they didn't feel comfortable. So he came home a half shaved dog. But we took him back in this morning and they finished him. But he just doesn't look the same. He looks like a greyhound. Like his face is so skinny and gross. And like Haley's like, he is not cute. It's not my dog. He's not my dog, you know. <laughs> so that was an interesting story. Like I can't believe they sent him home last night. Half done. And they didn't charge him. They just sent him out. Like like we needed to go figure it out. 
But um, Joel talked to the <laughs> store manager, and they got him in with somebody today who's like the head person, and she was really great. But they did call me. Oh, they made him buy some spray for this cut and said, and bought him like these hemp things to help him calm down and said, you need to buy these and give it to him because he's really hyper before he comes in. So he gave him those this morning and he dropped him off at like seven this morning. And anyways, that's they my gave him the military story. cut. Yes. So um, high and so, tight. Yeah. I don't really love it. Not so cute. <laughs> But whatever, I'm like... I know Tina relates to that. She has two golden doodles and has to shave oh, them. Right. And they get right. matted or whatever it is if, so if it goes to too keep long. up with golden doodle hair. Like, it's crazy. But we like him longer. Like, we love the long look, but we just can't. Even if we brush him, he just gets matted. The last two or three times, Haley cut his hair, and it took, like, six hours. But this was so bad. I'm like, we have to start over. Because it was just, like, he was... It was so bad, he was, like, chewing on himself, and then he started bleeding. I'm like, we got to take care of this, so... If anybody cares, that's my Bentley Golden Doodle <laughs> story. Um, I haven't had a lot of other things because it seems like we it was less than a week ago <laughs> that we podcasted. So just, you know, busy with life. and No marathons, no, no skydiving, I, no, like, bridge pretty, jumping. No, it's pretty tame. We did what a dull party. life. <laughs> it's still nice weather. It was like 86 on Saturday. So we went paddle boarding, which was really fun. And then Joel and I do this thing where we try to go to a new restaurant every time we go out. So we have this whole like running list. So we found a new cute one the other day. It's just fun. Keep it yeah. fresh. So we don't ever go to the same restaurant twice. Unless I'm with my kids and then it's Red Robin every time. But <laughs> um, for Joel and I, we're always finding different restaurants. And... What if you find one that's just like awesome? Do you go back or is it just we on the list yet. for the future? It's for the future, you know. Okay. So we could go back at some point. Um, yeah. So that's been kind of fun, but nothing big and exciting. I mean, we're excited for his family to come, like his parents today, his sister tomorrow, and then his, I think his brother will be coming over to visit on Friday. So um, his cousin's getting wedding, getting married. <laughs> He's getting <laughs> wedding. Uh, yeah. So, or she, she's getting married. So we're excited about that. Um, it's going to be a Brazilian, uh, wedding. Like they're gonna have Brazilian food and dancing and I'm really oh, excited. Okay. So, I mean, I guess the Brazilian like what's Brazilian is food like, um, is it similar so, to like Mexican food or, I mean, they do a lot of rice and beans, but from what I know, cause I've been out to like Brazilian restaurants a few times, it's really fun. It's like, um, what's that called? Like a buffet you go through okay. and it's like, a stick of like chicken, chicken wrapped with bacon. I always get that. And then you like pile things on your plate and then they weigh your plate and then they charge you like per pound. Oh, um, like frozen yogurt. Yes, it's like frozen <laughs> yogurt. But there's these Brazilian restaurants. I mean, I'm not doing a good job describing it. And there's all kinds of things that I don't really know and stuff like that. But I do know Pondicajos, like I do know a few things. So Pondicajos, we have them for breakfast all the time. They're like these little balls filled with cheese, like, it's like they're breaded on the outside. So Joel used to make them like from scratch, and then we found some in a store that you can just buy and put it in the oven. So or the oh, that sounds good. I mean, the, you know, air fryer. It probably but, doesn't help that I'm hungry. Right. I I'm like, tell me food. all about the food. <laughs> yes, and here's another one I know: brigadoras. Those are little chocolate candies. They're so good. The first time Joel came here, he made them for our family. They're like, like a chocolate hard to explain like a candy and his aunt just said they made a whole bunch for the wedding so i was like oh yeah but like he made chocolate yeah so it's like cocoa powder and stuff and then you melt oh, okay sugar, and they're like little like they're kind of gooey like they're fudge really, kind of okay yeah we'll have to send you some someday so you guys yeah can please like, they're really good tell joel like, like go get him right now okay <laughs> <laughs> i want some what are they called again rigaderos like my accent, my accent does the <laughs> does the r roll yeah. anyways let's get into our episode oh I yeah think people are done with us and they want to hear what we're talking about <laughs> okay you gotta listen carefully to the title ready yes people are clueless as if rolling right? with the homies <laughs> So how did yep. you guys Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Was that your phone? Oh shoot. Did everybody hear wait. that? <laughs> once once in yep. 93 episodes. I would think once. by episode 100 you're going to get that down. <laughs> okay. I anyway, just had to. I'm sorry. Yes. Fantastic title. Yes. So, so what does that Let's mean talk to about you? it. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, as you go through this, well, first of all, I want to preface this by saying that <clears throat> we strongly believe in showing people grace. That's the point of this. But it's yeah. fun to talk about it sometimes. And we've heard some silly things. And uh, we realized that uh, we did a, an episode called Ridiculous Things People Say. And we just kind of wanted to expand upon that because uh, a lot of you in the beginning, um, and I know there's a lot of people that probably haven't gone back and listened to a lot of our older episodes. So you probably have experienced some of this stuff. And we just want you to know that this is normal and that people a lot of times will say silly things. And sometimes they don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're trying to say something helpful. Or, like, you know, for example, and we'll get into the um, specifics of this later, but they'll say, I totally understand what you're going through because of X, Y, and Z. And first of all, you should never say that to somebody. No. No matter what, even a, even widowed to widowed, we, I mean, we all do it. We're all guilty of it. But even widowed to widowed, saying, like, I totally understand mm -hmm. what you've been through is not accurate. Um, right. Because even you and I, we both lost mm -hmm. our spouses to cancer. It was very different. Um, so anyways, what is it, what do you like, you know? Well, first of all, I prefer that people say, um, clueless things over not talking at all. As, as if. Like, as, okay, you're going to say <laughs> that so many times. <laughs> and I do want to point out that Mark came up with the title. That was a good one. Good job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I first. No doy. <laughs> I haven't heard that since like the eighties. No doy. Uh, like it was like no duh, but there was also like it was really annoying. No doy. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tina and I watched a funny video where the it was like all these like it was like a couple breaking up in like '90s references or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny. So yeah, he's like, I thought I was too legit to quit. Or whatever. Oh my God. Like yeah, there was a lot of good ones. But anyways, so yeah. Okay, so anyways, I would rather somebody say something than not. So I'll just start with that. But let's talk about all of these things that people say. Well, we can talk, like share our ones that people have said to us, and then I can share more from grief recovery and what I've heard. There's a lot of things out there. But my top one, my top saying that I hate, <laughs> God just needed another angel. Mm. <laughs> I can't stand that one because we, first of all, we know that when people die, they're saved, they will go to heaven, they do not become an angel. And so that one really bothers me. And God doesn't need someone actually someone pointed this out to me the other day, we were talking about these things it, we do it in grief recovery, we talk about all this stuff that people say. And she's like, Yeah, and God doesn't need anything like he doesn't mm -hmm. need someone. I was like, Oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's my like least favorite thing that anyone's ever said to me. Um, it just I don't like it. It's not true. Number one, it's not true. And God didn't need an angel. Like he didn't need to call Luke to heaven because he needed him as an angel. So that that one kind of. And honestly, me. it's a downgrade. A lot of okay. people don't know that human beings rank above angels. Okay. Um, in the now, obviously, we don't have the powers they have, but they also don't have free will. They're not made in God's image, is my understanding. I could be wrong about that. Um, but I, I feel like that's what I know to be true. But um, from a heavenly perspective, we rank above angels. We will rule over angels um, in heaven. And that's, that's, again, you know, as we said in the beginning of this podcast, neither one of us are Bible scholars. But I've listened to a lot of sermons and I've paid close attention and I, I can't quote it exactly, but I feel like that is truth. So if I'm wrong, I've heard it too. sorry, but I feel like that's accurate. Mm -hmm. So what is your top thing that you don't like that people have said to you? <sighs> well, and I actually just mentioned this recently, but um, not necessarily from people who are widowed, but from people who are not, uh, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> that one just drove me nuts. And mm -hmm. it was like the kindest intentions, too, of them right. saying it. They're trying to tell you, like, oh, my gosh, that's so terrible what you're going through. That's what they're trying to say. Yeah. But for me, it just made me feel so isolated to hear that everywhere I went. Oh, I can't even imagine. Right. It's like what I'm hearing is like, 
oh, your life sucks and I'm so glad I'm not you. Like that's what I kept translating it into in my heart. Yeah. And it just made me feel so alone. So that was probably um, – and that's not that's not even like um a clueless thing that people said they're trying to be nice but for me that was like my that was and i've said this before in the podcast i actually um kind of snapped on somebody after i'd after i'd heard that so many times i was like he's like yes and i'm all going with the clueless theme and he's all like and i'm all like and And then then they're all like like. (laughs) (laughs) um but he said Oh man, I can't even imagine. I said, yes, you can. You just don't want to. And he like looked at me all weird. I'm like, well, think about it. Think about that. Your wife is sick. She's dying. She's falling apart and you have to watch it every day and still be dad and hide your feelings from everybody and including her. And you just have to take it and take it and take it over and over. And your prayers don't seem to do anything in this and that. I just like went off and I just like looked at him with his eyes like wide open. I just said, oh, man, I'm so sorry. But I felt really bad, but I just I just heard it one too many times. And um, poor guy was there to bring me dinner. And I, like, went off on him. But he, he understood. He was like, dude, you're going through a lot, man. I totally forgive you. And um, I was like, yeah, that was messed up, man. I'm just, I'm just broken. And I, I've heard so many people say that to me recently. It just makes me feel so alone. And. So anyways, um, that's, that's one of my biggest things. But, um, for me, the, it's, it's all of the stuff that I've heard stories from other people that really like blows me away. Um, so you go on your turn. Let me give you my second least favorite thing. I understand I'm divorced. Mm. (laughs) Now I know a divorce is a horrible thing. All that. I mean, I'm married to someone. Yeah. But if your kids still have their other parent, it is not the same thing, right? That is not the same thing at all. And so that one has always bothered me. Yes, there are some similarities um, when someone is divorced, but it is definitely not the same thing. And divorced, you usually had some kind of choice in it. Mm. And widowed, we had no choice in it. And so it definitely is not the same. Um, I mean, I know there's some similarities of like, being a single parent, but that's not even the same thing. That's not what we're talking about. But just the fact that um, people try to say they understand, but we do give them grace. They're trying. I like I said, I'd rather them say something. And I've never said anything back um, to somebody like mean about it. Just like oh, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. Just rub it in. <laughs> well, I was trying to say that nicely without saying that you have, but like I just kind of let it go. Let it go. <laughs> I was waiting for you to sing it. As if. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm on okay. a whole different train of thought now. I know. As if. Um, okay. So, anyways, that's my second favorite, least one. Like, least that favorite. That was so close to English. There you go. Least favorite. <laughs> second least favorite thing that people have said to me. Okay. Do you have that any works. more that people have said to you, or you do just want to share one you've heard? Um,. Well, there there were things that were said to me that I have since uh, confronted the person about and forgave them. So I'm not going to bring those up. But there were some very hurtful things that were said to me mm-hmm. um, that were shocking um, for me to hear that they were said about me. But um, I've totally forgiven the person. And so I'm a big believer in, you know, when you forgive someone of something, you should be trying your best to move on from it. Um, I think my dog's scratching at the door. Sorry, it, can, it uh, distracted me. So, um, yeah, I, I've heard a lot of really silly things. And I'm trying to think what else people have said that really bothered me. Um, yeah, I, I've heard the, you know, heaven needed another angel. I know one of the things that really, really bothered me when Lacey was sick was um, somebody told me, that the reason she's not being healed is because you don't have enough faith. Oh, I had that one too. Or that it was because Luke didn't have enough faith. Yeah. Or he had a sin issue. I heard that one right, too. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yours. No, yeah, that's 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 about it. But I also did want to comment on the divorce thing that, yes, we, you know, we've talked about this on air several times. We both acknowledge that divorce is very, very hard. Yes. And we're just saying it's different. 
Um, and I know that's what you said, but I just wanted to clarify. I believe the same thing. It's just different. And they're mm-hmm. both hard for their own yeah. reasons. But, you know, I feel like a lot of times in divorce, um, the love kind of went away for somebody. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I mean, obviously there's different circumstances to every situation, but a lot of times the love went away. Um, And that's not how it is when you lose a spouse. You you love them and you don't want them to go away and they don't want to go away, you know. Um, And obviously every situation is different. Um, but you know, I'm just speaking generally. So, um, I know that there's some different stories out there. We've heard them, but just generally speaking. So I did want to comment on that. And, um, gosh, there's, there's so many, so many things that have been so hard, but yes, I've also heard the, um, you know, oh, you know, she's, she's looking down on you and she's watching over you and, you know, all these different things that, they feel good, but I have too much understanding of biblical knowledge to know that that's not true. Mm-hmm. She's not watching over me, you know? I mean, now I don't know that she might not be speaking to Jesus on my behalf, but like, you know, I've had people make it where like, she's going to come and visit you. And, you know, and, and in all fairness, I don't really know how it works. So, you know, I can't say in absolutes that that's not true. Um, because I just don't know, but I feel like, I I don't feel like that's true. You know, I don't feel like people, oh my gosh, can you hear my dog scratching at the door? (laughs) She really wants in. Um, so I'm going to have to let you talk and get up and grab her. But, um, so that's, that's been something that has, has really, really bothered me. Um, cause I'm like, that's just not true. But yeah, the biggest one was, you just didn't have enough. You're just not. You don't have enough faith to for her to be saved. She would be healed. You got to believe in your heart, and she yeah. will be saved. And I'm like, I've been doing that. I've been yeah. believing and praying, and you know. So, anyways, those are uh, you know some of my harder things. But I'm sorry, I'm so distracted by this dog. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna keep talking, and you're not gonna know what I said because you're not here. <laughs> Um, anyways, so I think for me, I'm stalling so I can say it. You don't know Sorry. what I said about you. Huh? You won't know until the episode comes out. Anyways, <laughs> I didn't say my next thing because I didn't want to repeat it. So my next that thing makes sense. that I really didn't like is you'll find someone else like, oh, you're young, you know, mm. youngish, well, 29, whatever. And <laughs> you'll find somebody new. And in the beginning, I did not want that. Like, it was like, I was a few months into this and somebody said that and I was like, no, like it, it grossed yeah. me out. <laughs> totally. It's even hurtful when somebody says that to you when you lose a dog. Right. If right. someone's like, oh, you can get another dog. You're like, I don't want another dog. Well, you know? Actually, I think we talked about, it's one of the grief myths from the grief recovery is replace the loss. And so Mm. people are trying to get you to do that. And I understand it. And eventually I did find somebody else and I was ready for that. But in the very beginning, it wasn't helpful. So what grief recovery talks about is things that are intellectually true, but they are not emotionally helpful. So like you're young, you'll find somebody Mm. new. Yeah, that's intellectually true or he's in a better place. Yes, he is, but that doesn't help me right now. And yes. so um, it's basically like well-meaning people that give advice. Um, I'll give you a couple other examples of um, intellectually true, but they're not helpful. Uh, for example, be thankful you have another son, like if someone lost a son. Mm. The living must go on. All things must pass. Oh, well, she led a full life. Like that's another one mm. that it's like, yeah, it's intellectually true. It doesn't help. You'll find somebody else that's on there. God will never give you more than you can handle. Um, not true. <laughs> and be grateful you had him for so long. Like mm. people will be like, oh, at least you were married for this many years. That's so great. <laughs> like, yes, but I didn't get the rest of my life with him. Well, it belittles your feelings. Yes. It, it um, like takes away from your feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those are some of the things, um, so basically, like, things that people say are either helpful or they're not. Like, 
the but like I said, I would rather somebody say something like for let's switch it around instead of saying some of the thing, those things, I would rather they say I have no idea how you feel, but I'm here to listen. Mm. Something like mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah, I like or, that. Or like I imagine I have no idea how you feel, but I imagine it's really difficult. Like I actually said something very similar in grief recovery to someone who was widowed but a different story than me. Um, because it was like, I can't be like, I get it totally. Yes, I relate to some of the widow things, but I don't have your mm-hmm. story. Um, and so I think just really giving people that grace, um, like it's mostly because people don't know how to deal with grief. There's not enough education and what, what's out there is misinformation. Uh, let's just take it way back to, I'm sure we share this in lessons, be- lessons. See, I'm thinking grief. Lessons. Recovery, I go to lessons, um, because we have lessons and we have shared this in podcasts before that the stages of grief are not actually real. (laughs) Like they were created for those dying, not for those grieving. And so a lot of people Hmm. get mixed up and they think, what's wrong with me? I'm not going through anger. I'm not going through this. Well, it's because it's not even created for that. Um, I'll find, I'll give you the facts on the name of her in just a minute who actually invented it. Um, And so that's just another thing that there's so much information, misinformation on grief. Like that's why I'm so passionate about grief recovery because I want people to actually have information and know that there are myths out there, that there are just so many things that are not true. So let me find that. I'm going to find it to read it to you about her name. But while I'm flipping through pages, what else um, (laughs) have like anything else you've heard that you want to share? No, it's cool. We'll wait. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't edit this out, you know. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, gosh, there, there's, it, it's tough because, like I said, like the people do mean well, and that's something we have to remember. But the the things that, gosh, it's, mm-hmm. it's like so many things I, I want to say on this that it, um, my brain is like slowing down. But um, so people mean well. And we have to understand that and that they don't know what you're going through. So they don't know what to say. Cause I remember I used to feel really weird talking to people. So here's the thing that I would want people to take away from this and, and understand is that they don't know, they don't understand. And they're not in a place to accept the darkness that you feel. And most people want to brush over it. That's why those things are said. That's yeah. why they say, oh, well, you know, time heals all things or, oh, you know, at least you lived a full life and all the all the things, you know, you were just mentioning. People say that stuff, but it, it's sad because they don't know that they're they're belittling your feelings. And, and 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 that's not the exact right word I'm looking for. I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but they're they're taking away. They're basically saying, like, don't be sad about it. Right. Oh, like, don't be yeah. sad about it because at least this, at least that, and mm. yeah, that's hard. Mm. And, and different, I think it's really good to have empathy for other people, even that have been widowed. So for example, Tina and I, we lost our spouses in very different ways. Hers was instant. Mine was long and drawn out. And, you know, hers was, you know, my friend, uh, Chris explained it to me. He had a really great analogy. He said, well, for you, it was like somebody slowly ripped off the Band-Aid. And for her, somebody just ripped it off. Both hurt really bad. But the beautiful thing about it is I have this natural tendency to think what she went through was harder. And she has this natural tendency to think that what I went through was harder. And so it helps us have a lot of empathy for each other. And honestly, there's been times where I've just pictured her sitting alone on her couch, like eating dinner by herself and just watching TV, trying not to cry for another night. And Mm -hmm. I I can just cry in an instant, just like um, thinking about what she went through. And so it's, but you know, but at the same time, she thinks about what I went through and just thinks about how torturous it must have been to just watch the love of your life just slowly fall apart. And so, um, anyways, I, I'm kind of off track from the topic, but just that I wanted to say that yeah. it's important, even in the widowed community, that when you hear about somebody else that's that actually does know that they've also lost a spouse, that 
don't compare your story to their like have empathy for what they've been through also and know that what they went through is very hard too and just show empathy towards one another but especially show grace towards the people that don't know and yeah. i always say this but thank god they don't know like we need yeah. to be thankful for them that they don't know so anyways did you find it i did so i'm gonna read this is from the grief recovery handbook so it's about confusion about stages. Many people are familiar with the pioneering work of Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who identified five emotional stages that a dying person may go through after being diagnosed with a terminal illness. She identified those stages as denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. One result of Dr. Kubler-Ross's work is that many people now tend to apply the concept of stages to other aspects of human emotion. Grief, which follows death, divorce, or other losses, should not, however, be regarded in terms of stages. The nature and intensity of feelings caused by a loss relate to the individuality and uniqueness of the relationship. So, it, I mean, it's talking about, like, mm. there's confusion. Like, it's an actual thing, but it was created for those dying. And so mm. there's so many... Um, people who feel like there's something wrong with me. I never went through this. So if that's you, let that be known that that's not even applying to those grieving. Um, it was actually made for those dying. So that's just some grief education. I was one of the ones. I, I remember yeah. thinking that, that like I didn't go through these stages and I just chalked right. it up as like, well, I guess I did go through these stages before she died. Mm -hmm. But I just went straight to like, depression and lostness yeah. that was like where i felt i was and anxiety oh excuse me mm -hmm. and anxiety we and we did an episode called anxiety the forgotten stage of grief and mm. um yeah. you know we i mean gosh i never had anxiety in my life until i went through what i went through with Lacey and woke up in a panic attack almost every time i woke up from every single i didn't even sleep then it was just a series of naps right. but every single time i woke up it was gasping for air and panicking and knowing something was wrong but i didn't know what and i mean i just started having panic attacks and so i still like i still wake up with anxiety i it's not nearly as bad not nearly as bad not nearly as frequent but that introduced anxiety to my life and i i really do think that i have a form of ptsd um gosh this dog sorry <laughs> scratching at all my doors silence the dogs come on dogs this is a hundred episodes now, almost. <laughs> um, so, anyways, yeah, that's that's all I have to say about that. I know you're gonna say that. Like, I literally knew that was coming. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to talk about is other unhelpful things that, like, when people are afraid to say the word "died" or "dead" or something like that. The things that people say instead. Here's some of those phrases: um, "She passed away," "He's gone to his eternal rest," "Dad's gone." He expired, which I've never literally heard that one. Um, we <laughs> that lost, sounds weird. We lost mother. Imagine how this sounds to small children who expect the truthful answers. What happened to grandpa? Grandpa's gone to sleep. Like, so it's talking about like when you talk to children to be able to say died, like mm. he died instead of like just passed away. Um, it says generally it's best to avoid all metaphors when speaking about death with children. Developing young minds do not always have the ability to match reality with metaphorical images. I thought that was mm. really interesting. So if you do have young children, um, it's okay to say, like, daddy died or mommy died. You don't have to say passed away, which is interesting. When Luke died, it was like the opposite. Like, Hayden was 15, and he's like, don't say died. So he'd be like, say mm. passed away. So just in his mind, he liked it to be passed away but just i thought that was very interesting that it can confuse kids mm -hmm. um, about that so i was just like a little side note when i was looking through the book um let's go back to the, what's the word we're using clueless <laughs> things that people say um peyton was i've said this before but he was like 11 or something let's see when let's see when luke died yeah because he's 14 now and someone in his class wrote him an email or, or said it to him and said I know how you feel my fish died so mm. now he was a little boy I was like whatever you know he doesn't get it and then my, my kids went through a phase where they're like just nobody remembers and nobody gets it like because it was COVID and they went back to school and like nobody really said anything and that was hard for them I, th I think 
it's almost worse when people don't say anything. In my opinion, I even wrote this whole article about it before Luke died, just about people talking about his cancer. I called it to speak or not to speak. Hmm. And I talked about like, I personally would rather that somebody said something. And it's usually because they are being um, kind of selfish because they don't want to be put in an uncomfortable situation. But mm. I'm guilty of that. I can think of a couple of things when I've done that, even you know recently when I didn't want to bring up something that could be hard for someone. I know better. Like It's better to acknowledge it. And I would rather somebody say one of these clueless things than say nothing at all. Right, yeah. And I've heard it explained as like... Um... And I totally felt the same way. But if somebody says to you, like, oh, I didn't want to bring her up. I didn't want to, like, make you remember. I'm like, I didn't forget. Like, Mm -hmm. I never forget, you know. And uh, so that's one of those things. But I'd say one of the most clueless things that people have said to me Mm -hmm. is, well, I mean, that's cool for you. But, like, if my spouse died... I could never date somebody ever again. Oh, I hate that one. Like, and I'm like, don't... no. I'm like, that's so easy to say when, you know, your husband's coming home at 5 p.m. And you yeah. guys still have like a normal life. Of course. Of course, we mm-hmm. all feel that way. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was always my thing is like, OK, well, try losing them. Then try going for years by yourself. Yeah. Or months or whatever, whoever's timeline, you know, we're talking about. But, like, try going years by yourself, doing everything by yourself, and tell me that you don't then start longing for compassion or right. uh, compassion, um, companionship. Companion. Yeah. Um, and so that's oh. that's been one of those things where it's cluelessness. Uh, like, yeah. it is the definition of being clueless. Totally. I actually had a friend. Like, totally. Like, friend. Totally. Like, whatever. <laughs> I had a friend say that to me, and I did speak up and say, you don't know. Like, you mm-hmm. don't know what it's like. And then she later was like, oh, yeah, you know, like, you don't know. Because, <laughs> I mean, I can, like, I could imagine, I would never say that to someone, but being, like, in a totally, like, I'm married again, and, you know, happy, happy, happy. Like, I could imagine feeling that. I would never want to get married again. But mm-hmm. you don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say that now like even Mm -hmm. though i'm like completely happily married and i can't imagine my life without joel if something happened to him i don't know i mean he says if something happened to me he'd be a monk like he would just not (laughs) like he would when we were dating he was always like it's you or i'm gonna be a monk like i'm not dating like (laughs) so i'm always like well I'm like, no, I wouldn't want you to like not date anybody else. He's like, no, I would be a monk like if you died. But <laughs> anyways, that's a little a little side note. But that that is definitely something. Okay, so I thought of a completely clueless thing that somebody said to me. And they will never listen to this podcast, so it does not matter. Remember Hot Mom Guy that I went on a date with yes. in my dating days? I call him Hot Mom Guy because he wore a shirt that said I love hot moms. And when we were on our date, I mean, most everything he said was clueless and ridiculous, but the worst one, and maybe looking back, maybe it wasn't the best thing to talk about on a date. I was talking about Luke dying. (laughs) I mean, now I can kind (laughs) of look back and see. Maybe that was a little bit weird to bring up, but I was talking about, I mean, I don't think I was going through his death story. I was talking about cancer, tumors, and and all of a sudden he's like, I had a tumor once. And he starts like telling me about some tumor he had removed. And it was just like... That's not like my husband died. Like, yeah, that was completely clueless. Like he was just trying to find like something to say. Like, oh, I had that too. It was like he's trying to one up everything. I'm like, you can't one up yeah. death. Like, <laughs> you know, and like, oh, you want to go skydiving? I'll take you. You want to go dancing? <laughs> Let's go. Didn't he, didn't he tell you he would go to the grave with you? <laughs> yeah, you want to go to the grave? I'll go with you. Just like, <laughs> totally like way too hyper. <laughs> uh, that was an experience. Oh, that's funny. An experience. So, anyways, he was yes. clueless, like yes. dating a widow, and like. Anyways, <laughs> oh. I also want. I also wanted to go back um, to the things we were talking about. So, uh, we know that a lot of you listening, we've heard it from you that you do not want to date ever again, or you're not ready right. to date ever again. Um, so we're not talking about your feelings. Right, we're talking right, about yeah. if your feelings are that you do want to date again mm-hmm. or get married again, that that is somebody's response to you 
is right. I had people say to me, um, it's just so weird seeing you with somebody else. Sorry, oh, yeah. I'm just trying I'm just trying yep. to like deal with it. And I'm that, like, yeah. Oh, you're, you're it's hard for you? Like <laughs> tell me tell me more about how hard it is for you to like um Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, so that was another one of those ones that, you know, was hard for me where I was just like, dude, keep keep that to yourself. You know? That's, like that's an inside thought. Yeah, yeah. That's Don't let that outside. Is. Keep that inside. Inside thought. Like, I'm like, because trust me, for as weird as it is for you, it was even weirder for me. And, right. you know, you didn't have to go through the feelings of like that you were cheating on your yeah. spouse. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't have to go through the feelings of acceptance uh, all over again of their death. And you didn't have to go through grief again all over again. Um, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like somebody is saying that, to you, oh, it's just so weird seeing you with somebody else. It's like. <laughs> Try living. Right on. Like, Thanks for the encouragement. You know, like, I just I feel <laughs> like people should, you know, be happy for you. Um, oh, yeah. Now I would understand if, say, you know, somebody cheated on their spouse and yeah. their spouse divorced them, mm -hmm. and then you got you know you got with somebody else, and then they're like, it's just really weird seeing you with somebody else. Like you deserve the guilt. You deserve to feel that yeah. if you cheated on somebody. Mm -hmm. But if your spouse died and you're just trying to find some shred of happiness again, um, and you know, and it could be a lot more than a shred of happiness as we know, but just saying if like when you're first kind of considering that route, mm -hmm. um, you're looking for some sense of normalcy again. Like they don't, so that's the thing they don't understand. They're like, and that's another thing I've had people say is like, gosh, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. Oh yeah, and I'm like, for you, I know. I've lived it every minute, every hour, every day, every week, yeah. every month, every year. I've lived it. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me it doesn't feel like that long. You know, when you know you had normal, and then you might think about me. You know, once every couple weeks, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. Every yeah. single night, I have cried myself to yeah. sleep. You know. Right. But anyways, thought of another one. Yes, this isn't just me. I've heard people in the widow community say this when you're like, "Oh, you know, my husband died. What happened? Like, why do you mm. need to know what happened to my husband? You know what I mean? Like, I usually just say he died of cancer. But like, if you don't, people are really curious. And so that's mm -hmm. something that I learned. Like, let people tell you in their own timing. Um, don't you know? I think it's just really like, why does everyone need to know? That's what? interesting. I never, I never thought about that because it never really bothered me if people asked. But I get it. I get how that would be bothersome because I do remember, you know, times when Lacey was in the hospital and I was going through hell. Like, mm -hmm. and then I'd get these like private messages. Hey, so what's going on? Yeah, because people. And it's like, know. why? You just want the you inside care. scoop? Like, yeah. ask somebody else. Like, don't ask the guy who's freaking broken yeah. in the hospital right now or trying to get into the hospital yeah. during COVID, you know. Don't ask before, him what's going on, you like, know. It wasn't – obviously, it wasn't even my friends because they know what, you know what happened. Like, but it was – it's more like social media stuff when people would be like, what mm -hmm. happened to your husband? You know, just like, mm -hmm. why does it matter how he died? I saw – and you know what? From the outside, um, I had a friend – um, who was, it, it was a, a friend. I had one, believe, <laughs> I swear, I swear. No, I had a friend that we were friends when we were young and, uh, you know, we kind of drifted apart. He moved away, came back, but we never really were like close friends again, but we reconnected on Facebook. Well, I had heard out of nowhere that he killed himself to his wife when she said like, I just have to let you all know that, um, James passed away last night mm -hmm. and Oh my gosh, the number of comments that were like, oh my gosh, what happened? What happened? What happened? Right, what happened? Right. And it's like she hasn't responded to these for four days. Yeah. Like obviously she doesn't want to talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I, yeah, I found out that he committed suicide. And, um, but, uh, I found that out through like a newspaper article or something. I don't remember how I yeah. found out. It was many years ago. But I definitely didn't ask his wife what mm -hmm. happened. And, uh, it was just it was but the realization of what you're talking about like kind of hit me when you said that because that's what i was thinking of is even then this is way before lacy ever even got cancer or anything i knew you don't ask like you just right. kind of i am so sorry you know i don't need to know what happened but um 
but but I was really curious and I oh, yeah. really really that wanted to know. True. And so I started like searching like obituaries and things like that. And yeah. somehow, I don't remember how, but somehow I found out without asking anybody. Um, so anyways, yeah. So I get what you're saying. Little side note, and I want to bring this up because I know we have listeners um, that are suicide widows. Um, so I was mm. listening to a podcast. I mean, it was a while ago. And she said that she likes it when people say better death by suicide rather than committed suicide like that it was some because it's with their mental health and that it's more like death does that make sense yeah like just to like a just something i've heard i, n- um, I never would have thought of that yeah and you guys um that are witted by Susan and i probably people, just said that you did that's why i'm saying oh okay okay um and that's fine like most of us didn't know that but this was a suicide widow and she said this is how we like to for people to say it ah. um so that might be something interesting. We'd love to know if you are a suicide widow, what you prefer when mm-hmm. people talk about it. It is a very, very, very sensitive subject. Yeah, and my apologies if that was insensitive. No, no, no. I don't think that was insensitive at all. I I'm not apologizing to, to you. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to share. Like, if you heard me say something and you knew that people had told you, like, oh, it's better right. to sleep, you right. want to know. So, yeah, for sure. I mean, I would want to know. No, I so appreciate I just, that. I, I will try to say that from now on, for yeah, sure, because I, I never I thought about that. Until that. But anyways, um, it yeah, the whole thing where people just need to know, that really bothers me. But I do, I get it. We are curious, but I feel like have respect for the person and their sure. value um, yeah. in their own time. Um, and if you're not close yeah. enough to know, right, then you're yeah. not close enough to get the answers, you know? Uh, a lot of time, unless they want to share it or something, obviously. But yeah, if you don't already know, um, mm-hmm. yeah, anyways. But yeah, I remember fielding a lot of those private messages and it was like, I can't like, do you really think that I want to like explain the whole thing to every single person when I'm going through this? So yeah. I kind of, um, a friend offered to kind of be like a liaison for okay. me that I just filled her in. And then she would yeah. kind of tell everybody or make an update or whatever, you know. Um, yeah. And that's what so. I ended up turning my podcast, uh, the Peace Cast, which I've put some clips of that on here before. I turned it into, it was originally interviewing people who'd been through hard things. And then I turned it into an update because it was like, I can't say these things over and over. So I'd say it once, mm. put it on Facebook, and they could listen because I was like, I just can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> over and over. No kidding. And we d- we did another episode too that was uh, don't make grief a competition. And oh, we yeah. talked about a lot of these things in there also. But like the um, you know, I I totally understand my dad mm-hmm. just died, or my grandpa just died, or my yeah. sister just died. They're all tragic in their own yes. way. Yeah. Um, like for example, um, my mother in law, we lost the same person. Yeah. But it's different. She lost her daughter. She knew her daughter a lot longer than I did. Um, gosh, that's crazy to think. Actually, we almost knew her the same amount of, well, no, no, no. Cause her, her time didn't stop when I met her. Sorry. Yeah. I was just thinking, <laughs> oh, sorry. I, well, I was thinking that I met Lacey at the know. age, sorry, <laughs> dumb moment, but, um, but you know, also like I lost my wife and the yeah. mother of my children. And so we both have been through really hard things, losing the same person, and it's different and and mine is no easier than hers hers is no easier than mine or whatever you know however you want to word it it's just different and so yeah. when somebody tells you again going back to what we said in the beginning i totally understand because and then they make it about them yeah you know what i mean like mm-hmm. they they will take it from you and make it about them instead of just saying like i'm so sorry they will take it from you and make it about them and what they've been through. And there's been a lot of times where I've had people say, like, oh, I totally get it because, you know, when my sister died, we all this and that. And then they start – and all of a sudden I'm listening to them and yeah. consoling them about something that happened five years ago, which yeah. doesn't make the pain any less real. But I'm going through this right now, you know, at the time. Um, just grieve with me, you know. So anyways, yeah, people are just so clueless. Like, I know, right? Like as if. <laughs> I, knew just I was, I was setting myself, I was setting that up. Uh, I, you know what? That's one of those movies I surprisingly do not know a lot of lines from. I remember when the guy was shaving his head yes. and 
he like got all he, he got all gangster in front of his girlfriend. He's like, I'm keeping it real. I'm keeping it real. And she's like, I'm gonna call your mama. He's like, wait, 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 wait. Starts freaking yeah. out. But uh, yeah, that was a funny movie. I haven't seen There's that in another, a long time. One of my favorite. I did introduce my kids to it a couple years ago. You got to wait until your kids are older. But um, uh, I, I love this line, and my friends and I would always say it in high school. Let's take a lap around before we commit to location. Because that was like the scene <laughs> where they go in a party. And that's what they say. And so every time we'd go anywhere <laughs> together, one of us would always say that. So that's that, pretty good. Right? I like it's that. Like, Let's take a yeah. Look before you commit to location. I mean, that way you can like see things before you commit to location. So that's one of my favorite clueless lines. That's so awesome. Going back to not just like, oh, I keep think, forgetting the word we're using. Clueless. Hello. We're talking about clueless. Clues things people say. Also clueless things that people do. So mm. I just remember being around friends when they're all talking about their husbands and stuff like a few months out or less than that. And just being like, hello, does anyone remember? I just lost my husband and this is a really mm -hmm. hard conversation for me. That was hard too. And it's not, I know it wasn't on purpose. They just didn't forget. It. Yeah. It it's well, it's totally clueless. clueless, clueless to how that might make me feel that mm -hmm. I had just lost my husband. Um, and like, I find myself trying to be sensitive now to other widows who are not married again, that want, I know want to be. And mm -hmm. so I am not that clueless person, just always talking about my husband <laughs> and mm -hmm. things like that. So I don't become that to someone else who like, I obviously wouldn't do it to someone. I'm thinking like a whole different scenario, not someone who just like lost their spouse. I wouldn't be talking about that anyways. But like someone further down, like I've met a lot of widows who really want to be married again and they're not. And so mm. I want to be sensitive to the fact that God has totally blessed me with a new husband and not be always talking about my amazing husband, which for the record, he is amazing. He cooks, he cleans, he does every, like I was telling my mom that she's like, he's you awesome. So lucky with him. I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> Literally, I think we talked about this last time. Like he's just mopping right? the floor. Like he's just always like gets up and makes me my eggs, brings me my energy drink. Like, how are you feeling today? I love you. You're so beautiful. Like it's amazing. Like it's he's such a good guy. I really like him. Like oh my goodness, he's amazing. Like literally yeah. every day he'll be like wow. I'm like what? He's like you're so beautiful. Wow, like I'm the luckiest guy in the world. And he doesn't like he's not just saying it. Like he literally means it. He'll always be like, how did I get the most popular girl in college? I can't believe this. Like he still says it to me every day. <laughs> I'm like it's me. Like it's just it's amazing. So anyway. so you really were the clueless girl from high school <laughs> or college. No, he was well, not clueless. Clue from the movie. From the movie, he, I mean, he never like paid attention to me. I guess I don't remember him either, so whatever. But <laughs> my point is okay, here now I'm awesome. talking about my amazing husband. I'm just saying, <laughs> I, am. Oh, I don't brag about him, but hold on, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. He's awesome, there's nothing he, he wrong really, with everybody, really should is. be happy for you, and if they're not, then that's a personal problem, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's nothing wrong sensitive. with you being happy. Yes. So I hope when I share about him, it encourages people. And most people tell me it does. Like, you give me hope for the future. Yeah, so yep. Like, I've heard yes, that a lot, too. You can have love again. And it can be amazing again. And life is, yeah, it, it gives people hope. That's how I look at it. It's not about I'm trying to brag, even though I do have an amazing husband. I will say that. Um, I think you I, should brag on your husband. I think that's awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I like that. I think that's cool. Like I like to, um, you know what I mean? Like I like bragging, yeah, right? you know, on my situation or whatever too. So, but, uh, I was going to say one of the things to me that feels, um, another one of those like clueless things was here. And it's very similar to what you were saying, but, um, when I would hear, and first of all, I never did this when I was married anyways, Lacey and I just totally didn't believe in doing this. Um, when the dudes were together and they're all complaining about their wives, like they were still sitting there doing it and like, Oh man, she's just nagging. She's doing this. She's doing that. And I'm like, uh, hello. Do you want to trade? You know, right. like I'll, I'll, I'd rather have a nagging wife than no wife or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, um, or I've, I've heard of people saying, and you and I have talked about this. Gosh, 
I wish my husband would die. Oh, you remember that? Yes. Worst thing. That's and it was like, like, like wow. Like, no. I, I can't I can't even right now. I can't right? even imagine. <laughs> I can't even. No, that's As horrible. if. Like, no. Yeah, it's terrible. So, yeah, there's so much cluelessness. But, yeah, that was one of those things that, like, really bothered me. I'm like, really? Like, you're going to. Yeah. And I, but the thing is, they weren't thinking about it. They were just right. doing their normal stuff. Right. And, um, but, you know, I, honestly, I didn't have things to complain about about Lacey. And I remember she, mm -hmm. she was the one that said, she's like, I feel bad when all these women are like gossiping about their husbands. And I'm like, I know. don't have that problem, ladies. My husband's great, you know? And like, yeah. she's like, sometimes I feel like I should just like think of something just to like <laughs> not make them feel bad. Cause you know, she's like, well, he like leaves his socks on the side of the bed and it like bothers me. <laughs> But he gets him in the morning, so I guess yeah. I don't really have anything to complain about. Um, but, you know, so anyways, it was something her and I, like, both believed yeah. strongly in is that, oh, like, yeah. to keep your marriage strong, yes. you shouldn't be gossiping about each right. other. Like, if you have a problem with me, bring it to me. If mm -hmm. I have a problem with you, I'll bring Typical. it to you. Yeah. It's our conversation. It's our relationship. Let's not, you know – as much as possible, let's not get other people involved in it. Yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes oh. there's, sometimes you need an outside perspective, um, mm -hmm. things like that. But gossiping just to gossip is, you know, not cool in a marriage. So anyways. Not cool at all. So I want to bring it back <laughs> as we wrap it all up. You, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I bring not it back cool to, at all. It's not cool at all. I want to bring it back. To bring it all back. Back streets, back. All right. Is that where you're going? No. Nope. No. Mine was, uh, oh gosh, it was bringing on back. Boom, doom, doom, but... doom, doom, doom. I can't remember who that was. Mm. I think it was Wu Tang Clan. Wu Tang. Anyway. Okay. Anyways, I'm going. Bring it on to... back. Bring it on back to how do we show grace? Like, what do you do in the mm. moment? You know, so I feel like. Something hurtful is said, just saying something to yourself like, okay, they just don't get it, and showing them grace, like not saying anything rude back to them. If you do, it's okay, mm. it's okay. But trying to like hold that in, and then maybe if it's the right situation, the right person, you can use that time to educate them in a kind way, like I did mm. with my friend. Like, no, you really don't know what it's like to be like single and have watched suffering and all of that. Um, so. Mm. Just kind of feel out if it is a time that you could educate. And I don't mean like a social media war back and forth. Like I'm talking in person. People are saying stuff um, and just like releasing it. Like how do you – how did you? Because I don't, I don't think we're in that right now where people are saying things to us that matter like that. But how did you deal with that in the beginning? Well, first of all, you have to remember that you want to keep rolling with the homies. Like, rolling with the homies. <laughs> that was a good one. You, I, you know, you want to keep that going. Um, you were thinking of that. I can see when you think of things. You were thinking of that while the I was wheels, talking. The wheels are turning. There's a little yeah. hamster inside my head <laughs> running on the wheel. Um, so I remembered that, first of all, I, I, I was able to find this overwhelming thankfulness that they didn't have to experience what I did. Like, I don't want anybody else to have to experience what I did. That's and that's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I know I'm speaking to a whole audience that's been through their own terrible stuff, but I'm just speaking for myself in that moment. I was just, well, it was like kind of selfish, but and selfless is that I was selfishly thinking about all the hard stuff I'd been through, but then selflessly thinking like, I don't want them to have to go through that. So I'm glad that they don't know. But more importantly than that even was that I don't deserve grace. I don't deserve the grace that I'm given from God. I don't deserve all the blessings that he pours into my life. And so I should be able to extend grace and and abundantly, you know. Um, it's hard. We're human. But mm -hmm. I want to be able to be a man of like ultimate grace and love and yeah. forgiveness and kindness and so i want to hear everything they say and you know try to think about it from a perspective of the grace that god has shown me right that i haven't deserved that i've as i've thought about the life that i've lived that 
you know, I was a drug addict and God saved me from that. Mm -hmm. Literally saved me from that. I heard a voice speak to me when I was, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, I'm going into something totally different here, oh, but I was awake for three days on drugs, hallucinating. So, you know, some people would think maybe that was part of it, but I heard a very clear voice say to me, this isn't the life I have for you, go home. Mm. And I left, it was so strong, I left. I remember this feeling like somebody cares. There's somebody that cares and it was Jesus. And um, I rode my skateboard home and I slept for like 40 hours straight and I woke up and I never looked back and I never had withdrawals. Mm -hmm. I never had, it was, it was absolutely miraculous. Like talk to somebody who's doing methamphetamine and cocaine um, and crack. And I know that's that's humiliating for me. This is a long time ago, but um, I, I've lived a very weird life, you know, and you don't hear about stories about people that have walked through that that didn't have a really, really hard time quitting drugs if they made right. it out. It was like I heard this voice speak to me and I never looked back. And I never woke up wanting it. I, I wanted to be away from it. I never wanted it ever again. And that was like about 24 years ago, 25 years ago, something like that. So it's been a long time. But I was somebody who was robbing houses to feed my habit. Mm -hmm. I was, um, you know, and I was always the, uh, I was always the one that felt guilty about it. Out of all my friends, you know, they were laughing and I was the one that was like, guys, we shouldn't be doing this, but um, I was doing it with them. And so I say all that to say, I truly know what it means to receive grace. And so I should be able to freely give it, you know what I mean? And so it, I know this is kind of a really serious part of a kind of silly topic, but um I mean, so that's that's kind of how I, I find grace for people is I've received a lot. And so yeah. I should be willing to give it. Yeah. So anyways. You know what I like? You're like tearing up. You're like so passionate about this. Like that just shows your heart and like your passion. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that with all the people that are not watching <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> I just said it's Goldman. So yeah. Mark crying over here. <laughs> Listen, emotions are good. Tears are good. Tears are healing. All the stuff we said yeah. a million times. So we never want to suppress it. So Yeah, no, definitely. And there's this stigma around like men aren't allowed to cry. Oh, right. I yeah. mean, I was raised, I was raised like that. You, mm -hmm. you quit crying or I'll give you something to cry yeah. about. Like we knew it's you bottle that stuff up. You bottle that yeah. noise up, you know. So I was raised that way. Men don't cry. Boys don't cry, you know, and um, as a skateboarder also, like, you know, yeah. you fall a lot. And I was, I was, I was committed to skateboarding. So I hurt myself a lot. So um, there were a lot of times that you just learned that you don't cry around your friends. So, but as I became a man, I realized like, there's nothing wrong. Like, why did, why is there right. this stigma? Like men, men have feelings too. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, but yeah, no, I am, I, not only am I passionate about grace, but um, I'm extremely blessed every time I remember the life that I should have lived. Um, the life that a lot of people I still know traveled down and they yeah. went, they kept going down that road and it did not end well. I have, I have known, I have friends that died mm. um, from several different situations, friends that were in and out of prison, um, you know, and well, the list goes on, but um, some of them are still living the life. Some of them are still living that, that way. Like they still think that the, they're still the victim. The world is out to get them. And uh, so anyways, yeah, I went to a therapist and he said, your story's amazing. You should be dead or in prison right? for sure. But not only that you're not, but the fact that you have this view of such optimism of the world is miraculous. And he was a Christian and um, he said, and it's just a testimony to the saving grace that God did in your life. And so for me, gosh, if that's some way I can give back is to show somebody grace for not having been through something so horrible, like, mm -hmm. gosh, I, I want to be able to do that. You know, that's why with that friend that I snapped on, I apologize like immediately, yeah. <laughs> but let's talk about what, sorry. This like 
it just like I had this whole like domino thing in my head. Like God saved you to then be Lacey's husband to walk mm. her through this like nobody else in the whole world could have to then be in this widow journey journey where we're helping widows all over the world and then to meet Tina. Like it's mm -hmm. beautiful. Like think about if you had died, like how different life would be for so many people. And God knew that you were the one person in the whole world to walk Lacey through this. And like, I want to mm. remind that to our, our listeners. We've talked about that before. Like God chose you. Like think about mm. that. If you had never been with your spouse, then you would not have been there to walk them through whatever it is, whether it was an instant death, whether it was a long death, you were there to be their spouse. And that is a privilege. Like I Absolutely. love that thinking back on that. That was a privilege. Like I was yeah. the only one chosen, you know? And so I hope that you can see that instead of like, this is a curse that I'm widowed. No, this is a blessing that I was my spouse's wife or husband for whatever, whether it's a few months mm -hmm. or years or whatever it is, you were chosen. And so I just got reminded of that as you were speaking. Hmm. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that, um, it's obviously not hard, right? Um, it doesn't mean that it was a blessing that they died, <laughs> you know, right, but, right. but, but we were a blessing to them. Yeah. And also like, you may have been chosen because you would bring your kids up in the Lord and the, the Lord knew that you could handle it. Um, and a lot of us, you know, we go through bouts of feeling like I can't handle this, but like, mm -hmm. you know, but also we live in a fallen world where s yeah. sin has led to death. And, um, but yeah, you're, you're right that I, and at the risk of sounding arrogant and I hope I don't, I do not think that there is a person alive who could have done a better job walking Lacey through right. than me. True. Um, I don't. And of course there is, I'm not that dumb to think no. there's not, but like, I really, really don't think that like the, like the chances of meeting Lacey of me, of somebody of Lacey meeting somebody and marrying them that would have done what I did for her as far as, and for me, it was just, it, I didn't do anything special. I just loved her a lot cause she was yeah. such an amazing woman. Um, but it was so hard. It was so crazy, crazy, crazy hard. Um, she was paralyzed and, you know, I can't even, for her own dignity, I can't even ever share on this podcast how hard it really was. Um, but it was really hard. And I don't know that there are a lot of other men that would have stood by her side with the faithfulness that I did. I just every day, every day I had this whiteboard that I, oh, I hate thinking about the whiteboard, but every single day I wrote on it. I, I had little goals for her every day. I changed her Bible verses on there every day. Wow. But one of the things I had on there every single day was with a check mark next to it, you know, or a box to be checked was smile and laugh. Mm -hmm. And every single day, no matter how bad her cancer got, well, towards the end, but that's a totally different story that I'm not mm -hmm. going to get into. But while things were a certain way i'll just say um as long as possible yeah that's a good uh one. i made her smile and laugh every single day even going through what she was going through i was able to make her smile and laugh every single day that's um awesome. and you know help her find joy every single day so i'm sorry this totally turned into like a brag fest and i didn't mean to no, do that but it just Why? like i met i i was trying to keep it on topic with what you're saying is that you were chosen yeah. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when you told yeah. me that for the first time, I remember that vividly. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like four months out yeah, and maybe three months. And you said when we first met that I just felt God telling me that he wanted me to reach out to that guy and yeah. say that I, God am proud of him and that I chose him. And I remember when you first told me that, I was just wrecked. Like, mm. I was like, I needed to hear that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, yeah. um, so it's it's very true, you know. So, yeah. anyways, 
Sorry, I went off on a No, I'm just thinking there. the whole domino th effect of everything. And that was, for the people that might not know, that was our very first conversation, interaction ever, mm -hmm. um, was that conversation um, through Facebook. And here we are today doing this podcast, um, hopefully helping people. We know there's people all over the world that said it, it, it helps them. So it's just cool yes. to see God's hand in everything and like yes. all the stuff. So. It's amazing. It's it such is. a blessing to have been chosen for this yeah this podcast i mean you didn't it's... want to be chosen in the beginning but here we are i was like michelle in. stop <laughs> asking i'm not doing a podcast <laughs> well, good thing i'm very persistent so <laughs> you are and i do remember it was like um i felt like god was putting it on my heart to do it and you hadn't asked for a while <laughs> and i felt like god was putting it on my heart to do it and i said all right here's what it is if she asks again, oh, she I will say yes. And then I remember you're like, so like, what do you th like? Seriously, like, what do you think about a podcast? And I was like, let's do it. And you were like, what? I remember going, what? <laughs> <laughs> it surprised me. And so then here, here we are. are. That's crazy. Episodes in, which yep. speaking of that, I just want to share this with everybody. Yes. We have a plan for when we get to episode 100. We are going to do, drum roll. A live episode. You heard that right. Live episode. <laughs> We're not sure exactly how that's going to work. The details will come soon, and we will let you know when it's it, when it's at. And it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'll come watch Mark cry and sing. And <laughs> <laughs> no edits, you know. But we don't really edit that much, anyways. Like nothing. We don't. But I'm. We just, it makes me nervous. I don't know why, oh, but we're going fun. for it. So tune in to see if I mess up. Yeah, in seven more episodes. So yep. couple months probably till we get to episode seven 100. after this one, right? After this one, we have seven so for more, them seven more. Okay, like a couple months. So that'll probably be November, sometime before Christmas. Ish. We'll give you the exciting. It'll live be a Christmas episode. episode. A Christmas episode. Anyways, you want to pray us out? Yes. Okay. Thanks. I'll pray us out. <laughs> pray us out. Oh Lord, as if we need any more things to thank you for. <laughs> Oh, thank you for laughter yeah. and for joy in even like the darkest seasons of mm -hmm. life. Um, thank you so much for all that you've done for us, walking us through through this journey and taking our boats to the other side of the grief, you know, the grief lake. Um, we pray for all those listening, Lord, that you would be with them and help them have grace for the clueless things that people say and just help them understand that we are all human beings we are all trying our best and that usually people have good intentions and help us even when they don't to show grace and love and compassion, all the things that Christ tries to teach us to be. Um, and uh, we'd just like to thank you so much for this ministry and, and what you've allowed us to do. We thank you for entrusting it to us. And um, yeah, just thank you, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm not going to say the usual. I'm going to say it differently. Not even Wait. All right. But they know what they're supposed to do. Bing! <laughs> okay, so if you have not, I'm going to say it differently. Pattern interruption. It's good. If you have not subscribed to this podcast, actually, I listened to a podcast and it was a different term. It's not subscribed anymore. Followed, maybe? Whatever. The button that you push. So that Do you it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> that you get your episodes every week without even thinking about it, then you want to make sure you subscribe, follow, whatever it is, you know, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you know, all the places that people listen. That would be awesome. And we do really appreciate if you would take just a minute or two to write a couple words um, about what you like about our podcast because that helps get the word out to other people. Um, if you would like to be a guest, we now have an application form that we have a link in the show notes. You can fill that out and we'll get back to you about being a guest. And also want to mention, as you guys know, we are under Widow Goals, uh, the nonprofit that I run. We not only provide social media support podcasts, we do grief recovery scholarships and events. So if you've been blessed by the ministry and want to give back, there's a link below for a tax-free gift. All right. I think I covered all the stuff. So thanks yes. for listening. Great job. Um, as if. and As if. Like <laughs> totally. Have, like totally listening. Wait, wait. Okay. 30 seconds of talking like clueless. Like totally <laughs> thanks for listening. And like as if. Let's take a lap. No, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> take a lap before we commit to location. Okay? That Where's was your, great. Oh. 
Where's your lines? Uh, I don't know. I just totally drew a blank. Rolling with the homies. That's like the only thing you know. Yeah. I don't, it was like I just forgot how to like talk it's valley okay. all of a sudden. I think I've been living in Tennessee too long. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Tennessee? Is that how you say it? Like Tina? Tina, Tennessee. Tennessee. So people with an accent, they whenever there's an eh, like like uh, Tennessee, Tennessee. For, yeah. uh, for us, how we say it, Tennessee, yeah. they say Tennessee, Tennessee. like T-I-N. Or like my neighbor, my neighbor told me about it and she was just cracking me up. She's like, yeah, like we don't say Ben. It's like Ben. Oh, like the name Ben is Ben. <laughs> So anyway, so Tina and I have some funny exchanges because she's got a southern accent. Nice. It's it's mild compared to some people here in Tennessee, but yeah. Tennessee. Tennessee. But yeah, anyways, All yeah, right, we have we'll a good see time. You guys next yep. time. All right. Like bye. Like bye. Totally. <laughs>